Chapter 12, we're going to be looking a lot at circles. And in section 12.1, we're going to focus in on tangent lines. We're going to look at how to find angle measures and distances, also radius using tangents. And then we're also going to see whether we can determine if something is a tangent or not. And lastly, look at how to find the perimeter of a triangle using inscribed circles. Let's look at some vocabulary here. Tangent to a circle. A line in the plane of the circle that touches it in exactly one point. The point of tangency is the point where the circle and the tangent line intersect. So if you look at this picture here, we've got our circle. This red line here is my tangent line. You notice that it's a straight line touching my circle in just this one point. That point, point B in this case, is called the point of tangency. Now, one note that I want you to see here is that the ray BA is tangent, and because it's a ray, we call it a tangent ray. Now, this here is a line segment. Line segment BA is tangent, and so because it's a segment, we call it a tangent segment. So one property that we know about tangents is if a line is tangent to a circle, then that line is perpendicular, whoops, perpendicular to the radius. So if I look at this first picture here, I have that ML and MN are tangent to circle O. Okay, so these are two tangent lines. What is the value of x? Well, because these are tangent lines, by what we just learned, we know that these must be 90 degree angles because my tangents are perpendicular to the radius of a circle. Now, here I have a quadrilateral, and I know that inside any quadrilateral, all of the angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. So I'm going to take that lateral. I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to take 360 minus 90 minus 90 because that's these two angles here. I'm also going to then, well, let's see, that gives me 180. Now that I'm at 180, I'm going to subtract 117, which leaves me with my value of x, which is 63 degrees. Okay, so let's talk about a quick shortcut, though. Every time that we get this quadrilateral, we're going to have these two 90 degrees because I'm going to have my two tangents. They're going to be perpendicular to my two radius. So I can just straight up take out that 180, leaving me with these two angles here always being 180 degrees when I add them together. These two angles will always be supplementary. So I don't even have to do this whole part right here where I took 360 minus 90 minus 90 because that's going to happen every time. So then I'm just going to take 180, subtract the 117. Now in the U try, you have a slightly different problem. So go ahead and take a look at how this problem is going to work, and we'll look at it more in class. Okay, so now we're taking this problem, and we're going to have to find some sort of distance. These are going to be more real-world problems. Now, this first example problem is talking about the CN Tower in Toronto. And it says that it has an observation deck 447 miles above ground level. About how far is it from the observation deck to the horizon? And they tell you the Earth's radius is about 6,400 kilometers. So we need to add some information into our picture here. You'll see that I put this little tower on top of Earth. This tower is the CN Tower, and we were told in the problem that it's 400 and 47 meters above the ground. We were also told that the radius is 6,400. So I'm going to put that in both spots where I see the radius, kilometers. Now what shape do you see here? We have a triangle. And we know, because this is a tangent and this is our radius, that we have a 90 degree angle here meaning we have a right triangle that we can use Pythagorean theorem with. Our goal is to find x. So using Pythagorean theorem, x squared 
plus 6400 squared equals, oh, we need to find this whole length here. So I need to add 447 plus the 6400 that is our radius. So our total hypotenuse is 6847. And we need to square that. So these are going to be some big values. I've got x squared plus 6400 squared is 4096000. And 687 squared, 6847 squared is 4688144. So now to solve, I'm going to subtract. Man, good things we have calculators, huh? Zero, 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 zero. Those go away. I'm left with x squared equals that thing minus that thing five nine two one four zero nine square root of that, I get that x equals 2433.394543. All right, let's round that thing. Let's just round it to the nearest whole kilometer. So x equals 2,433 kilometers. So I guess that kind of covered up when I boxed it. 2,433 kilometers is your answer for that problem. And then there's a U try for you to do. Okay, so now let's look at finding the radius. This is going to be similar, except we just use Pythagorean theorem to find distance. Here, again, I see this right triangle, except I have two unknowns here. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem again, but it's going to be a little bit different this time. So let's take a look at what happens here. Okay, in this triangle, I've got 12 squared plus x squared equals, well, the length of my entire hypotenuse, we're going to write as x plus 8 squared. So 12 squared is 144 plus x squared equals, we need to square this thing right here, this x plus 8 squared. Now when we do that, I'm going to do it off to the side. We're down here at the bottom. x plus 8 squared means I'm multiplying it by itself. So x times x gives me x squared. x times 8 is 8x. Eight, 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times 8 is 64. I combine my things in the middle, and I get x squared plus 16x plus 64. So let's write that up here. x squared plus 16x plus 64. Okay, I need to solve for x. Well, I see that my x squareds are going to cancel out. So I now have 144 equals 16x plus 64. So I'm going to move my 64 to the other side. 16x equals 144 minus 64 is 80. I'm going to divide by 16. And I get that x equals 5. So my radius in this problem is 5. All right, you've got a U try. Go ahead, bring that to class. Okay, identifying a tangent. So we learned a property that says that a tangent is going to be perpendicular. If it is a tangent, we'll have perpendicular to the radius. So I want to know, is this angle right here actually a right angle? Which means, is this triangle actually a right triangle? Well, I can determine that by trying to use Pythagorean theorem. If Pythagorean theorem works, then I know I have a right triangle. If it doesn't work, I don't. So let's set it up. 7 squared plus 24 squared. Does that equal 25 squared? Well, 7 squared I know is 49. 24 squared is 576. 
and 25 squared is 625. So 576 plus 49, oh perfect, 625 equals 625, check it works out. So yes, ML is a tangent because ML is perpendicular, remember we can use this symbol to represent perpendicular, to NL, the radius. So because Pythagorean theorem checks out, we do know that that is a tangent. And then you go ahead, this is your you, try for that problem. Okay, so on occasion you'll see a circle inscribed inside of a polygon. Now, when I have a circle inside of, like a triangle in this case, there's a trick. Because what happens is each of my two tangents, like these two right here, that are kind of forming this triangle, if you see that, it's a curvy kind of bottom here. That's like an isosceles triangle, if you consider it a triangle. Um, which means that this other side right here is also 10. If I look at that same case down here, I have this like little itty bitty triangle here. If this is eight, then this is also eight. And here, if I have 15 here, I must have 15 here. So that's the trick when you're looking at these sorts of problems, is that you'll always have pairs because you have this kind of isosceles triangle looking thing. So if I have all of that information, then to find the perimeter of my triangle, I just have to add up all of these lengths. So my perimeter, whoops, is going to be, let's see, 10 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 15 plus 15. So 10 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 15 plus 15. I get a perimeter of 66 centimeters. And again, the important thing to know is that with each of these corners, if you have a 10 here, you'll have a 10 here. If you have an 8 here, you'll have an 8 here. And this corner, if you have a 15 here, you'll have a 15 here. So then very similar problem for your U-try. Go ahead and then bring that to class, please.